Good morning. How good it is to be in the Lord's house, gathered together on this Epiphany celebration. It's so good to see you again, to be able to share God's word one with another. We thank the Lord for the opportunity to again gather in his name. Let us please stand as we begin with our invocation. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Sam, you want him standing or seated for the song? All right, for our first song, I need at least two action leaders. Who's hand? Oh, Preston, come on up. And one more. Anybody? All right, Preston, you can do it. We're going to do the hippo song. And Preston's going to help us lead the actions. Preston, you can stand right up here. So just a reminder, in the beginning, God made the seas and the forest filled with trees. He made the mountains up so high, and at the top, he placed the sky. God's fingerprints are everywhere just to show how much he cares. And in between, he had loads of fun. He made a hippo that weighed a ton. And then we'll spin around for the next part. All right, so this is the hippo song. In the beginning, God made the seas and the forest filled with trees. He made the mountains up so high. And at the top, he placed the sky. God's fingerprints are everywhere. Just to show how much he cares. And in between, he had loads of fun. He made a hippo that weighed a ton. Hip, hip, hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. Hip, hip, hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. In the beginning, God made the seas and the forest filled with trees. He made the mountains up so high. At the top, he placed the sky. Its fingerprints are everywhere. Just to show how much he cared. In between, he had loads of fun. He made a hippo that weighed a ton. Hip, 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 oh, bottom us. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. Hip, 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 oh, bottom us. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. In the beginning, God made the seas and the forest filled with trees, made the mountains up so high. At the top, he placed the sky. God's fingerprints are everywhere. Just to show how much he cared, in between, he had loads of fun. Made a hippo that weighed a ton. Hip, 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 oh, bottom of us. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. Hip, 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 oh, bottom of us. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. Last time. In the beginning, God made the seas and the forest filled with trees, made the mountains up so high. At the top, he placed the sky. God's fingerprints are everywhere. Just to show how much he cares, in between, he had loads of fun. Made a hippo that weighed a ton. Hip, 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 oh, bottom us. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. Hip, 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 oh, bottom us. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. We remain standing for our morning prayer as we join together. We pray. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. You may be seated. Our reading for this Epiphany Day comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the account that Matthew shares of the visit of the Magi. 
Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child and his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. A familiar passage to us as we share God's word this day. Question for you. What did you ask for this Christmas? Any hands that want to share? What did you ask for this Christmas? What was on your Christmas wish list? Yes. Something with a computer? Very good. Anyone else? No one asked for anything or wished for anything? Yes. Did you get it? No. <laughs> so then I asked the next question. Did you receive what you asked for? And how did you ask for it? Was it obvious to your parents or grandparents or anyone else that this is what you wanted? Did anyone receive some incense for Christmas? Or how about some myrrh? You mean that wasn't on your Christmas lists? We probably all would have been satisfied with something gold. And maybe some of you got something gold. Maybe earrings for the girls or a bracelet or a necklace or something. So gold might have been more of an appropriate thing that was on your Christmas wish list. As I've shared over the intercom and today, today is marked, actually yesterday was the 12th day of Christmas, and that was the Epiphany. And if you've noticed, usually when I present chapel, how am I dressed? Regular clothes, right? Shirt, tie, nothing special. What I wanted to do today was to set that apart to make an, imp an impact, an impact just even in a different visual of what epiphany might mean for us as God's called people. As I mentioned, it's 12 days after Christmas, our sixth grade music class knows all about that. Christmas is the shortest season in the church year, Christmas Day through the 12th days of Christmas, and then the Epiphany. And what I wanted to explore with you today is the significance that the Epiphany has for us. What is the Epiphany? The Christ revealed to the Gentiles. And that comes from the Gospel of Luke chapter 2. As Simeon reported when Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple, a light for revelation to the Gentiles. When Jesus was born, the angels heralded that message to Judean shepherds. They went to see the baby Jesus. The epiphany 
gives to us that Jesus came for all people. God promised the Savior through his people, but that did not exclude others. So when the Magi came, they went to Jerusalem, the capital, to find out where a king would be. Where would you expect a king to be born other than the capital? And Herod was the king at that time, and he was disturbed, as our reading told us, and all of Jerusalem with him. So where did Herod go to find out where this king was to be born? Where did Herod look? He looked to God's word. He had the scribes, the Pharisees, the uh, teachers of the law. They knew the scriptures. They knew the scriptures very well. You heard the prophet say in Bethlehem the Christ was to be born. That came from the prophet Micah. It's in Micah chapter, two, uh, chapter 5, verse 2. And that prophecy was 700 years earlier that God revealed that plan to Micah as he shared it in the Old Testament word. And they knew exactly where to look, and they found that Christ will be born in Bethlehem. So the experts of the word knew where the Messiah was to be born, born in the house of David, in the kingly line of David, but they couldn't comprehend that he was more than an earthly king, that he was the Christ, God's promised Messiah. It's difficult to imagine that they knew where to look, they knew the exact words to find out where he was to be born, but they could not see and believe that he was the Christ. What were they lacking that kept them from acknowledging that? Why couldn't they see and understand the very words from God that foretold the birth of the Messiah? What were they missing? Yes, faith. Well said. Gifts given. Again in the reading, we hear that they came and they opened their treasures. They gave gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These are gifts fitting for a king. The best. No Amazon online shopping with free delivery either that they sent ahead of themselves. They traveled led by a star. The Magi were granted that faith and belief that this was the Christ. And they followed. We don't know exactly how many Magi they were. Tradition says three because there was three gifts, but God's word never identifies that. They traveled by a star. Did any of you uh, look on December 21st and see Saturn and Jupiter pass real close together? And that was um, a really awesome sight. If you did, it was a great night for it, low in the southern sky. I was able to see that as well. And again, historians, Bible, biblical scholars may think it was something like that. But that's not known exactly either how the star was brought. But when do we see stars besides our sun? We see it at night. So the thought might be that they even had to travel at night, which would have been more and more difficult than we have today with our lighted highways. And what did they do first when they found the king? They bowed down in worship. That was their first response as they found the king. The second response was they presented themselves their gifts as an act of worship and praise. What a witness for us this day of how they responded to the king. So what does that mean for us today, all these many years later? First off, Jesus fulfilled all the Old Testament prophecies that spoke of him coming. And there were over 300 Old Testament prophecies that pointed to Jesus as the Messiah. And he fulfilled all of them. God's promised plan for salvation is found in Jesus alone. 
from Isaiah or from Acts 13, which is also a footnote to Isaiah 49. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Jesus refers to himself as I am the light of the world, the light that shines in the darkness. What Reagan said, the Herod and his wise men or his um, biblical scholars at the time, those that knew the Old Testament well, didn't have was faith to believe. We believe through faith. And how appropriate it is today that we will celebrate within this service our January baptisms. For it is through baptism that the Holy Spirit enters our heart and God creates faith. We see through the eyes of faith as well. So what is our response in faith? We see how the Magi did, how they traveled, and I'm glad that the Christmas decorations are up so you can see the banner of the wise men following the star, the Magi. Like the Magi, our first response should be one of worship and praise to our Heavenly Father. We just celebrated the birth of Christ at Christmas, the Messiah, and we gather together this morning in worship and praise of that great gift. Then we offer our gifts as acts of worship and praise. Now we may not have gold, frankincense, and myrrh to offer the newborn king, but we have our time, talents, and our treasures, whatever those might be to offer in response, in faith, through the worship and praise. And God has equipped us to do so, again, in faith. And God has that plan for each one of us. God may not send a star for us to follow, like he did the Magi, but he sends us his word. He sends us teachers and pastors, our parents. He prepares us for the tasks ahead and for the gifts that he will give to us and prosper in each of us as we follow that star, as it were, in our life as his calling to be his people. And we pray each day that the Lord further equips us for that task, that he grants to us an understanding and peace that only can come from him. A blessed epiphany to you, Christ has come, the light to the entire world, our Savior indeed. Amen. Our next song, thank you. And let's go ahead and stand for our song. Prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. strength with thine own hand so lead me on Lord from temptation purify me from within fill my heart with your Holy Spirit Take away all my 
sin. Together we pray the, the prayer our Father taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. As we gather in the Lord's house this day, we remember the baptisms, the baptism that he grants to us. Those that were baptized in January, please stand either in the sanctuary here or in the classrooms if you hear your name called during this January time. Seventh grade, Caleb Hudson. Kindergarten, Tyson Honebrink. Seventh grade, Gavin Wagoner. Sixth grade, Deshaun Parks. Kindergarten, Isaiah Evans. First grade, Olivia Borchart. Third grade, Sophie Borchart. In the resource room, Mrs. Davis. Kindergarten, Mrs. Hardiman. I was also baptized during the month of January. And Miss Riley was baptized in January. So we go to our order of service. The Apostle Paul reminds us, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. In baptism, God has adopted us as his own child and called us to follow after him in faith. We therefore now reaffirm our faith using Psalm 23. And we all answer together. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. May our Lord, may our Lord bless and keep you as you continue in this Christian faith. Live each day by the riches of his grace, prepared by God for every challenge. This is the day the Lord has made. As we celebrate our baptisms, what we've provided this year is a keepsake for all those, a cross in my pocket, to carry the cross in your pocket as a reminder each and every day, the love that God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has for you, and a prayer that goes along with that. So you'll receive this in your classrooms following chapel. Uh, since we had our baptism chapel in December, but we weren't on site together, those will also be distributed today as well. Thank you. Baptism celebrants, you may be seated. Please stand for our final song. that I face, stronger than the power of the grave, constant in the trial and the change, one thing remains, one
Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. And on and on and on and on it goes. And it overwhelms and satisfies my soul. And I never ever have to be afraid. It's one thing that remains. One thing remains. Your love never fails, it never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails it never gives up never runs out on me your love in death in life i'm confident and covered by the power of your great love my debt is paid and there's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love because your love never fails it never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails it never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails it never gives up never runs out on me your love. Have you ever thought of when you give thanks for something, how proportionate the volume is that you say thank you for something that you've received? If it's something that you receive that is just fantastic, you always wanted it, maybe it was Christmas morning, how do you say thank you? Say it. Thank you, thank you. wow. And what happens if you have something that someone, in, uh, I don't really want that. How do you say thank you then? Uh, thanks. What do we have an opportunity to do right now with the blessing? What's your response up there? Let's say thank you for the tremendous gift that God is indeed has blessed us with. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord Almighty bless us, directing our deeds, our act, days and deeds in his peace. Amen. You may be seated for announcements. First announcement is, again, you've heard it the next last yesterday morning and this morning, wear something that you receive for Christmas Day tomorrow. It can be a new mask. It can be, like I mentioned, PJs. Again, if you have a question of if it's appropriate or not, please ask before coming to school. It still has to uh, follow our appearance guidelines and standards. Third quarter began on Monday. Second quarter and our first semester is completed. Report cards will be emailed on the 15th, next week Friday, to your families. So be ready for that. And our letters from last school year. Usually we have our year-end assembly and we give the awards out for the academic earnings of our students. We were able to give the current freshmen in high school who were here as eighth graders last year, we were able to recognize them and to present them their academic C with the lamp of knowledge and pins at their graduation service this summer. But the company actually shut down from May till about August because of the restrictions of the pandemic. And so we were not able to, they were not able to fill the order. We've just received these uh, about the middle of December. So we wanted to recognize these students. Now these fifth graders are now sixth graders. 
So again, think of this as last year, you're now in sixth grade. But these students earned their academic C, which is a very, very difficult thing to do because to earn an academic C, you have to be four quarters on the A honor roll. And a fifth grader only has four opportunities in which to do so. So we commend these students for their diligent work last year and of course anticipate it continuing this year. Please stand when you're recognized, you'll receive your C in your classroom. Uh, Jason Bolton. Stay standing. Madeline Davis. McKenna Decker. Abigail Ebert. Rebecca Ebert and Aloysius Koken. We congratulate these students. Thank you, you may be seated. From our current seventh grade, but as again, this is sixth graders, uh, these students have already received their letter, so you get a pin for every additional quarter on the A honor roll. So again, please stand up, seventh grade, when you hear your name. Carter Gaskins, four more pins. Kyle Huntington, four more pins. Jackson Jeffers, four additional pins. And receiving his academic C for now being on the A honor roll four quarters, Nevin Jeffers. Thank you, seventh grade. And our current eighth grade, this of course was seventh grade's work. Again, your name called, stand up please. Rose Chin, four more pins. Josh Hensley, four more pins. Van Maui, a C plus three pins. Well done. Lily Robinson at home, four additional pins. Tegan Tingley at home, four additional pins. Lindsay Wheat has earned her academic C plus three pins. And Rihanna Wilson, one additional pin. Thank you, you may be seated. We celebrate the gifts of our Heavenly Father, one with another, so we thank the Lord for this time to be able to do so. Any other announcements? Have a blessed day as we continue the journey with the Lord, as we follow his star. Have a great day.